Hey everyone and welcome back to the Amber Living Blog. This is Beyond Film School and I'm Amber and today we're talking about the background PAs. Before we get into the background PA video, just a couple things. Set up that PayPal link and thank you to everyone that has contributed already. The first ever Beyond Film School short film challenge is happening now. People are making their movies. Movies are due June 1st. I will leave the link here for the video that outlines the requirements and guidelines for the film challenge. And yes, there is going to be a trophy. I'm so excited for whoever wins and they get this trophy. Virtual hangout happening June 4th, Thursday at 3 p.m. All the links for all those things will be below. So let's jump into the background production assistants. Now the team of background PAs, they have a lot of responsibilities. They manage a lot of people. A lot of people feel bad for background PAs because of all the things they have to deal with. It's an interesting job. It can be a fun job. It can be a very stressful job, but I think the good outweighs the bad when you're being a background PA. The background is like the one thing that's the AD department's domain. It's like, that's what they're in charge of. You know, that's the the, cre the the one place where the AD department gets to be creative is in setting the background or creating the world the show takes place in. Like, basically, if you just see two people in a restaurant and the rest of the restaurant's empty, it, it, something feels wrong. The world of the show is not convincing. What is a background PA? Now, the background production assistants are a team that are going to manage background actors, the stand-ins, and the photo doubles. So let's just talk about the team of background PAs. Now there's gonna be a background runner. Now the background runner is not gonna be a person who runs for things and they're like a gopher person. They are the person who runs background. The background runner is going to be a staff PA. Now below that is gonna be the main background helper. That background helper is usually an everyday additional PA. And below that there are gonna be day player PAs who are brought on as additional help to be additional background helpers. So let's jump into the responsibilities of background PAs. Now, there are a lot of them. There could be a lot of little tasks. It's really tedious sometimes, but you will I think you're gonna be surprised on all the things that the background PAs have to handle. So how we're gonna organize this video is that we're going to just go through the day of a background PA. So at the top of the day, the first thing in the morning, there are a lot of things happening because the background PAs are not gonna to be together they're gonna be separated. So you have one background PA, if you are on location, they're going to get the BG box from the Honey Wagon. Now the BG box consists of vouchers, different paperwork, stationary pens, post-it notes, and like paper clips, stuff like that. And they're gonna bring the BG box to holding. Holding is where the background is being held. And in most cases, holding and catering are the same place. There's gonna be another background PA that may be gaffing a bus or a van. Now gaffing a van, I explained in another video and you can check that out there. As a background helper, um, you, I was usually, when we were filming on location, I would have to be super early at the bus that was picking up background uh, actors. So I had to make sure I had a list and make sure that everybody is on the bus. So they're gaffing a bus or a van to make sure all the BG that need to be on that bus got on that bus and make it to location. They're gonna be on the bus with the background and they're gonna make sure the background get to holding when the bus lands. The people who are not gaffing the van or riding the bus with the background, the other background PAs are gonna be in holding. They're gonna make sure holding is ready. Now, they have to have enough tables and chairs for all the background. There has to be enough makeup stations. There has to be enough lighting. We have to know where power is. They have to set up their own table. The background PAs have their own table. And then wardrobe. We have to make sure wardrobe is set up and ready to go. And they have to make sure that they have enough vouchers for the background that are coming in for the day. Now, let's talk about the skins for a second. Now, you're probably like, what the hell are the skins? The skins are a document that give you all the names and the allotted number to those people that are going to be the background for the day and your stand-ins and or your photo doubles. So the skins is gonna be your Bible for the day if you are a background PA. It's gonna have all the people that are supposed to be under your management for the day. Now, the skins are given to you by casting. It comes from casting and it's usually emailed out to various people as a background runner or a background helper, you'll have access to that document. And also part of getting holding set up is you have to make sure that hair, makeup, and wardrobe and the ADs all have a copy of the skins. Once holding is all set up and background star to arrive as a background PA, you are going to be checking in background. So the background come in, they'll check in, they'll get what you call a voucher. And that's something that uh, the background PA is a runner and the helper are in charge of. 
is getting these vouchers, organizing them, making sure they're filled out correctly. Now, when you check in background, you're they're gonna come up to a table and you're gonna say hello, hopefully if you're a nice background PA, and they're gonna give you their name and number. And you're gonna make sure that on the voucher that you hand them is gonna be their number for the day. You write that number on the voucher and you hand it to the background person. So as each background person checks in, they're gonna give you their number. You're gonna check them off the scans. You're making sure that each person is accounted for and that you're not missing anybody. If you are missing someone, one of the background PAs is going to be calling casting. Let them know the people they are missing so casting can give those background actors a call to be like, hey, are you on your way? Or can you not make it today? And then casting will call the background PAs back and give them a report of who is on their way, running late or not gonna make it or canceled for the day. Once the bulk of the background is checked in, at that point, the background PAs will kind of splinter off. The background runner will kind of manage making sure people are going through wardrobe, hair, and makeup, and they are getting ready. It's a big process getting them ready. At times, uh, you are, you know, getting a whole group of actors ready for a certain stuff. It could be like 200 extras for a day, even more, maybe. Um, and you know, if it's a period piece, you're putting them through those period costumes, the uh, the wardrobe department are, you know, relying on you to get them through them efficiently and all that. It's very important that background go through wardrobe and hair and makeup, even though you might think that they might be in the background. This is, this is what sells the world of the show. At the same time, the background helper will still be at the check-in table, making sure to get all the stragglers that come in and giving them directions from there. Now, all this business I just talked about is happening all before crew call. All this is happening way before any crew members are coming to the set. Once the background is done getting ready, the background PAs have to make sure to NDB the SAG background actors. Why is NDB so important? Now, if you don't know, six hours after someone is in for the day, they are due lunch. If they are not breaking for lunch at that six hour mark, they are owed a certain amount of money called penalties. What NDB does is it resets the clock for SAG background to align their lunch time with the crew members on set. They may have been in at eight o'clock, but the crew might have been in at 10. So that means there's a two hour gap there, right? So what you do is you NDB at 9.45 to 10 to reset the clock. So at 10 o'clock, their day restarts. And that means from six hours from 10 o'clock, they'll break at 4 p.m. for lunch with the rest of the crew. Once the NDB is over, crew call has happened, the company is in, the background PAs have to make sure that the stand-ins have checked in and they're making their way to set. And they have to make sure if it is required that the stand-ins have color cover. And what do I mean by color cover? They have to make sure that they are wearing the same color as the cast member they're standing in for. So if a cast member is wearing white, that stand-in should not be wearing black because that really throws off the color and the lighting for g and &E and the DP. Now, usually the stand-ins are pretty responsible for themselves. They don't usually need a lot of managing, but sometimes you get a new stand-in and they have to know by the background PAs that you have to be on set to watch marking rehearsal. The background PAs have to get the background propped and there always has to be someone with the background. The background can't just go wherever they want without someone kind of keeping an eye on them because they have to be accounted for. And the background PAs are accountable for the background. Okay, so now what happens? The background is propped, they're dressed, they're ready, they're in wardrobe, they're in hair and makeup ready. Now you wait to be called to set. So during this time where you might be waiting to be called to set, the background PAs are going to be reading the scene to the background. They are doing this because the background have to know what's going on in the scene so they react the right way. Once the background is called to set, the background runner will lead the first group to set, then a background helper will stay in holding, and then in between you're gonna have other background helpers kind of making sure that the background gets to set in groups depending on how many background actors there are on for the day. The ADs usually bring more background than is needed. So they bring 20, but they may use 15. The background runner is going to be the main person that's going to help set background with the second second AD. Background PA on set. They get to work really closely with the second second AD and the background and you help coordinate background and their movements and help design the whole background world which is what the second second AD does. It looks stressful and crazy but it looks fun. At the same time the background helper that is also on set will be managing where the background are what they're doing and making sure they don't raid crafty, making sure they're not sitting on gear or equipment, making sure they stay quiet, that they don't bring food and drink on set, they have to make sure they don't get into the crew's way and they're not bothering cast members. And making sure they stay in one spot so they can be found when they're needed to go to set. Knowing that you are responsible 
for keeping tabs on as little as two or as many as thousands of background actors can be really stressful having to keep the tabs on them. So depending on what is needed for the scene, you may have a giant group of background and then you will have more than just the background runner and the second second AD helping set background. So this is usually for the more experienced background helpers or the background PAs where they know kind of how to handle setting background, sending them at random intervals, making sure certain crosses are happening in the background. And basically once you get them to set, you'll hand them off to the AD, the second second AD, who will usually set them and create the scenes. And sometimes you'll help set the background. And that is a really good experience if you uh, for when you do become a second second. While all that's happening on set, there is still that background helper in holding. Background helper, they get to stay in holding all day for the most part. It was fun, but I personally missed the excitement of being on set and being more connected to what was happening on set, but it was nice to just chill out and holding. And that background helper has to kind of keep an eye on holding in general, making sure no one comes in that's not supposed to be there, making sure nothing is stolen. You're there as a deterrent. I am also the one to watch over their stuff, so I guess kind of like loss prevention. What else are they doing in holding? There could still be background there and they're there waiting for them to be called. You are the voice between the crew and the background. So the background runner will let the background helper know that, hey, we need these five people, and then they'll send them out. And then another background PA will come catch those five people that the holding PA just sent out. So outside of just sitting and holding and being loss prevention, what they're also doing is they're prepping for the coming days, and they're also prepping for the end of the night. Prepping vouchers includes highlighting certain areas on the voucher that the background have to fill out. They're prepping post-it notes for later on. They're making sure that the background break down is prepped. It makes it easier for wrapping out. Now wrapping out is a huge process we'll talk about in a minute. Also for lunch they have to make sure that all the BG personal items are consolidated. There's enough room for the crew members to sit because like I said earlier holding and catering are usually in the same spot. Background holding is background holding in the morning but they have to remember that at lunchtime the crew members are coming in and they need a spot to sit. Lunch for the background PAs can be a little bit tricky depending on how big the group is. Now they have to make sure that crew goes through the lunch line first. After crew members and cast go through the line for lunch they can let SAG go through first and then non-union can go after that. So now we're talking about the wrap out process. So camera is wrapped for the day now what happens? The background PAs have to make sure that the background is depropped. They have to go to either the prop truck or the prop table and make sure that they get their SAG card back or their ID back for whatever props they were given at the beginning of the day. After they're deep prop, they're going to head to wardrobe, they're going to get their regular clothes back, they're going to get their voucher back, and then they're going to come running back to you to sign them out. When there's a ton of background, you need a lot of people to help sign them out because you can't really have one person signing out hundreds of background because it's going to take forever. So usually all the background PAs are going to help sign them out and they're going to have the ADs to help as well if it's a really tough day. So background PAs want to make sure that the SAG is signed out first to avoid any penalties or double time or anything extra they have to pay SAG. So a number of different things could be happening while wrapping out the background. So you might have a couple of PAs at the table signing people out. You might have another PA at a safety ride van making sure that SAG, if they want a safety ride. A safety ride is after 9.30 and it goes to either Grand Central or Port Authority and they have to make sure that anyone who wants that van is on that safety ride van. Also remember that the bus that brought the background to location, you have to make sure those same people get on the bus back to wherever the pickup point was. So there might be another background helper at the bus to make sure that before it leaves, everyone who's supposed to be on it is on it. So all the background is gone and your job as a background PA still is not done because now you have to organize all the vouchers and you have to finish the background breakdown. So the background vouchers are gonna be organized into to different groups of whatever pay scale they have or whatever extras they might have. In a pile, all the vouchers are exactly the same. So if there are, let's say, eight vouchers and all eight of them have different add-ons or different rates, then they're gonna be eight different piles, eight different post-its, and then eight different lines on the background breakdown. The flip side of that is that you could have 100 background and then all of them could be the exact same. So that's one post-it, one pile, one line on the breakdown. So the background breakdown and the pile of vouchers that you're gonna have are gonna be the same. So on top of the pile is gonna be 
the highest rate down to the lowest rate. On the breakdown, first line is going to be your highest rate all the way down to the non-union where they have the lowest rate. So all this is organized from highest to lowest and is organized this way to make it easier on accounting. So once your pile of vouchers is all together and in order, once your breakdown is done, it's going to be checked by the second second AD. Once everything is signed off and okay and in order, everything goes to the paperwork PA and then eventually it goes to the office and then it goes to accounting. So a couple of side notes about the background PA. I mean, you saw by all the responsibilities that I outlined, they have a lot of different things they got to do throughout the day. It can be pretty fun. It can be really stressful. It depends on who your background are and how you are interacting with the background. Because you have to deal with so many people, you have to be more flexible and you have to kind of read uh, how people are. It is helpful for you to be a people person that you know how to get the best out of people throughout the day. Even if you're having a bad day, you don't want the background to know it because the background sometimes don't get treated very well, so you don't want to add to that. And the background PAs have a really, really long day. One of my first jobs as a background helper PA was on Pose, and I was there three and four hours before crew call, and then I was there a couple hours after we wrapped. And let's hear from some of my PA friends about being a background PA. I've been doing a background PA, I've been background runner. I think that that's a really important job because uh, it's very, like it starts to lead into being an AD. And if you wanna be a second second AD, and that was a really good experience if you uh, for when you do become a second second, is starting to set the background so you feel comfortable that then when you brought on an additional second AD that you could sort of get your hands in there and uh, know what you're doing. The extras or the background actors uh, being in charge of them are the two best positions, I would say, to be able to level up if you were trying to become um, assistant director. Background? Uh, I think that would be, for me, I think that would be like the next step for ADing too, because, you know, you really are basically the right hand man of the second second AD. That's the nitty gritty of like, you know, directing the background would be, it's a good learning process, especially if you want to take the next step in ADing. Above a PA as an AD, you definitely need to do first team and background. I think knowing first team and background definitely helps you as a second second and how long it takes background to get ready will really help you be a better second second so that you can then inform your first AD and be one step ahead of him and just tell him yes or no when he asks you questions which is what I think I don't know that makes I think that makes you the best like second second when you already have the answers for your first so a lot of them said that being a background PA is really the next step. When I first started as a PA, I started in first team world. I was always a first team helper or I was always like helping on set and I had never done a background gig before. So I knew that I needed to get in background <laughs> in order to you know, get a well-rounded education of set life. I needed to become a background PA because I knew nothing about running background. I knew nothing about being a background PA. And when you are first hired as an AD, you are most likely going to be an additional AD for the background. It really is vital for you, if you want to be an AD, to learn how to manage and run background and learn how to set background, learn all about SAG rules. Now, the SAG rules change yearly in July when they renegotiate their contract. Be nice to your background PAs because they're dealing with a lot of different people, a lot of different personalities and they are not always having the fun a fun day because they could be having a lot of problems with a lot of different people. There's like lots of drama usually happening in, in the background world for some odd reason. I have no idea. More people equals more drama, I guess. So that is it for the video on the background PAs. I hope you've learned. If this was a long video, I apologize. It's just that the background PAs really do do a lot during their day. So that is it for now. Um, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please comment below. Remember a PayPal link, hit that up. Remember I have the film challenge happening. We have the virtual hangout happening June 4th. Sign up for that. All those links will be below. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me if you want to dig deeper at beyondfilmschool at gmail.com. Follow me on Instagram, like me on Facebook, all that stuff. And please remember to subscribe if you're new to my channel. And that is it for now. <laughs> And next week, we'll talk about the first team PAs. We're going to talk about the, the people who handle the actors. And that is it for now, and I shall see you guys next time.